Hello, and thank you for joining me again. This video is comprised of a presentation of my new book, which is called Whitehall in Stalin's Russia, British Assessments of the Red Army, 1934 to 1945. I will start by reading the book's synopsis, then I will make some observations pertaining to it. This study examines how the British official mind, as represented by the cabinet, the diplomats, military officers, the intelligence community, foreign observers, and a circle of established journalists, viewed the prowess of the Red Army over the period from 1934 to 1945. An appraisal of Soviet capabilities was a vital factor in the formulation and implementation of British foreign policy in the aforementioned period. Analysts tried to assess the proficiency of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, USSR, by attending Soviet Army maneuvers, visiting Red Army Institutes, and during the Second World War, inspecting Soviet forces on the front line and in the rear. The information accumulated in that way was fed to policymakers in Whitehall who would factor it into their top level considerations. When international relations became strained following the coming to power of National Socialism in 1933, British policymakers needed to ascertain whether the USSR could prove a deterrent to German expansionism. However, the Red Army itself came to be considered as a potential adversary when, following the Treaty of Non-Aggression between Germany and the USSR of August of 1939, it invaded Eastern Poland and attacked Finland. Then, with the fall of France in the summer of 1940, the question for Britain became under what conditions the Soviet government might be prepared to break its pact with Berlin and join an anti-German coalition. In each of those constellations, a solid assessment of the Red Army's potential was of the essence. The focus shifted again after the German invasion of the Soviet Union in June of 1941. Policymakers now began to analyze how the Russians were able to resist the Wehrmacht, because helping to maintain Soviet resistance was deemed crucial by the British government if Germany was to be defeated. Increasingly, and definitely from its victories at both Stalingrad and Kursk, the Red Army came to be appreciated as an immensely powerful force. That appraisal soon began to feed fears in Whitehall that the USSR would, in the post-war world, pose a threat to British interests, especially in the Middle East and in India, and to the security of continental Europe as a whole. Studying the documentary evidence reveals that, again and again, British assessments of the Red Army were marked by elements of racial prejudice regarding Russia and the Russian people. Those prejudices contributed to an underestimation of Soviet offensive capabilities prior to 1937 and to a belittling of Red Army achievements during the Second World War. Furthermore, the ethnic stereotyping of Russians by Whitehall's observers helped to undermine the Anglo-Soviet Treaty of May of 1942 and, as a consequence, constituted a factor in the deterioration of the Grand Alliance following the defeat of Germany. Finally, this study establishes Russophobia as a historical phenomenon ingrained in Whitehall and charters the history of the British ruling elite's racial prejudices towards the Russian race. Starting in the period following the establishment of diplomatic relations between London and Moscow in 1553, and up until the end of the period under examination in this study, namely 1945. Now, here are some general remarks about Whitehall in Stalin's Russia an additional knowledge which a reader will acquire from it. Firstly, the book is based on archival research, primarily British government files, Foreign Office, 
War Office, Cabinet, Military and Intelligence, but also private papers, as well as diaries of military and non-military officials alike. Secondly, the book is unique in that its contentions have hitherto not been made by historians, hence this is a novel addition to our knowledge of the history of Anglo-Russian relations. Thirdly, the book establishes Russophobia as a historical phenom phenomenon within the British corridors of power, which has clouded the minds of British officials for hundreds of years now. Furthermore, Unlike for the Western ruling elites' fake and ideologically driven definition of racism, which they have today brutally imposed in the Western world, Russophobia is real racism. So let me be clear. The fake definition of racism is opposing immigration and multiculturalism, whereas the actual definition of racism is believing that your race is superior to other races and that there are some races which are inferior. Whitehall in Stalin's Russia demonstrates clinically that Russophobia constitutes actual racism. Fourthly, the book details how Russia historically prosecutes war and what the historic strengths of the Russian military are, such as the extraordinary levels of endurance and tenacity of the Russian infantrymen. How Russia makes war is very different to how the West makes war. The useful idiots who are commenting on the Russian military campaign in Ukraine today, be it Western politicians or Western journalists or so-called experts in the West, offer what has been shown to be useless analysis, if we can call it analysis, on Russian strategy and tactics in Ukraine, partly because they are simpletons, but also because they are ignorant of Russian military strategy and tactics, something which has historically baffled Westerners. So, if you want to understand Russia's military strategy, and tactics in Ukraine today, then Whitehall in Stalin's Russia is an indispensable read. Fifthly, the book, in accounting for the creation of NATO and, in response to this, the creation of the Warsaw Pact, submits a previously unheard of explanation. And finally, the book contends that the origins of the Cold War are partly found in the British establishment's support to Ukrainian nationalist fighters in Western Ukraine in 1944, at a time when the war with Nazi Germany was raging, and even though Britain and the Soviet Union were allied with one another against Germany at this time. London's support to the organization of Ukrainian nationalists and the Ukrainian insurgent army, both of which collaborated with the Wehrmacht, the SS, the SD, and the Einsatzgruppen in murdering tens of thousands of Polish, Jewish, Russian, Ukrainian, and Belarusian civilians, was a severe violation of the Anglo-Soviet Treaty of May of 1942 and played a major role in the breakdown of the Grand Alliance after 1945 and the subsequent division of Europe into two armed camps. Whitehall in Stalin's Russia has received endorsements by senior individuals, including high-ranking American Army and Air Force officers and one of Italy's most distinguished of historians. Should you wish to purchase a copy of Whitehall in Stalin's Russia, then this can be done either through Amazon or through myself. For those of you who have read Whitehall in Stalin's Russia, please let me know your thoughts and impressions about the book or any questions or queries which you have pertaining to it 
in the comments section of this video. As ever, I thank you for taking the time to listen to my words, and I hope you will join me in my next video.